Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for coming to this first meeting of, fisc of uh, 2020. We're still in the fiscal year 2019-2020, but the first meeting of the calendar year 2020. Uh, you all have in front of you the hard copy of the town budget. Uh, please review this uh, before your subcommittee meetings so that you have a chance to ask you know, obviously you will ask very good questions, but that we can actually do it in a, in a, in a disciplined fashion. Um, uh, before we begin, we have uh, minutes that will be submitted from the last meeting at our next meeting. There were some logistical issues, so we will suspend the second order of business, which is the acceptance, uh, review and acceptance of the minutes of the last meeting until our next meeting. Uh, so uh, failing anything else, uh, we have Tony <coughs> Farrington, uh, uh, who chairs the Payment in Lieu of Taxes Committee for the Select Board, who has um, very kindly come to talk to us a little bit. We have had several discussions about revenue generation for the town. Uh, we all see the expenses. Those aren't going away. As I've said before, we don't have an expense issue. We have a revenue issue. And so one of the areas that we have talked about is um, try to see how we can generate some revenue from other sources in town other than the property tax base that provides 78% of our town's revenue. So, uh, Tony, we're delighted you could come and uh, please step up and um, tell us how everything is going. All right, well, excellent. Thank you for having me. Uh, I can provide you some updates here, Mr. Chair. Please do. Uh, for fiscal year 2020, um, Curry College has made a contribution uh, on the first fiscal year, first day of the fiscal year, in the amount of $110,000, uh, which was a 10% increase over fiscal year 19. Milton Academy has made a contribution in the amount of $140,000, okay, which is an increase. Um, from the prior year, fiscal year 19, of $125,000. BID Milton, the third part of the, uh, the big three, as they're commonly referred to, uh, has yet to make a contribution. Okay. <coughs> this is part of the problem that some of us have. These institutions are taking from the town now. They don't give enough. Mm -hmm. I think that's the consensus that we have. And I know you have all kinds of um, issues that you raise with them, and I'm sure they have all kinds of reasons why they don't want to participate in uh, sharing with the town and supporting the town that has given them everything. Um, what is the response that we could expect if we told them we wanted between the four of three of them, four million bucks next year. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> We're working on potentially trying to get the three uh, entities together. I, I don't think that that will happen, but it's been brought up that that idea has been raised mm -hmm. and we're working on trying to make that a reality. Mm -hmm. um, so far it hasn't happened. Right. Um, it's in their interest not to cooperate. Uh, mm, Self-interest, I would say. The positive sign is that the, the, there has been an incremental increase from year to year. It's well short of perhaps what we're looking for, but um, that is a, a, a silver lining, okay, in the, in the storm cloud, if you will. I, I would like to see more of a contribution, certainly from the hospital, and uh, we haven't been able to make any positive headway uh, in any respect. And the hospital's response is that they do make contributions to the town in other ways. And I'm sure that that's appreciated by those uh, interest groups that receive those contributions. I know that they've made contributions to the Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition, for example, but it's not the same as making a contribution directly into the, the town coffers. So, uh, you know, it's frustrating, certainly. What's behind the strategy in getting the three of them together? You mean like in a meeting? Yes, exactly. Why would, why would we do that? <clears throat> I think we would be better off dividing and conquering. Well, <laughs> I don't necessarily disagree, but the results haven't really been too positive okay. uh, with that strategy and to the extent that we could deliver this message. Um, Uniformly to, to the three of them? Correct. Okay. Perhaps it, it, the result might be different. Um, Christine, did you have a question? Based on the, the 
industry standard, for lack of a better word, what's what that like Boston gets? I can't remember the percentages. There's a formula, yes, a generally accepted formula. <laughs> Correct. Can you remind me what it is? And based on those, what would be the the, yeah. the target? So yeah. certainly, certainly, certainly. So what I can do. So, for example, if you take a look at this one, this is something we put together. So that's for curry, okay? Twenty five percent, roughly, of what they would pay if they were a commercial entity. That's right. Okay. And what would that figure be? For curry, seven seventy five, seven seventy six. Let's call it eight, seven eighty. Seven eighty. That's twenty five percent of the assessed. Yeah. Um, do you know what it is for Milton Academy? In the right. Hospital? So, if, if you were to take the total exempt value for Milton Academy, that's one hundred and sixty one million dollars. Okay. Right. And if you were to take that, um, the taxes on one hundred sixty one million would be what? Three point two six two. Okay. So three point two million dollars. Three point two and twenty five percent of that would be eight hundred and fifteen thousand. You reduce that by half, which is what's referred to as the community benefit, the benefit that Milton Academy confers upon the town of Milton simply by existing. So 400? Sure. For lack, yeah, yeah. It, just by existing, right? Some of us so that gets you down. Some of us outgrew that a long time ago. So, <laughs> so that, that gets you to $407,000. They've made a contribution for $125,000. So the balance owed using this formula would be $282,000. Okay. What about the hospital? Uh -huh. How do we come up with the 25% to begin with? So that's just the, the Boston uh, formula? That's the model that the city uses. So we just mimicked that. Right? What, what's the hospital number? That'll be good. The hospital number is, well, their pilot balance is 245000 But what would they assess, the, 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 I guess the question that we would be asked is the assessed value of the real estate. <coughs> For the hospital? Yep. $97 million. $97 million. And so the tax, if it were a taxable enterprise, that one, would be? 1.9. 1.9 million. But you're and so we get 25% of that would be 500000 give or take. Yeah, 491. Yeah. Divide that in half, and that's 245. And mm -hmm. that, that is the balance, too, because they've, they've remitted nothing. So it's 245 would be the expected payment. And... Uh, them remitting zero dollars, so that's what would we do, 245. Sorry, the piece of this I don't understand is why we're dividing it in half. It's because we're saying that they're, it's somewhere in the stratosphere, they're covering half of it by existing in our town? Mm -hmm. Correct. And <laughs> it raises the value. Actually, it does. Right? It raises that the value. Of I'm going to use that on my taxes from now on. So, <laughs> so, so I'm going to say that that. that's, yeah. that's yeah. kind yeah. of a jet, like, this is kind of the minimum, right? Like, this is what Boston uses to say. This is referred to as the Boston model. And so to answer your question, we they confer a benefit upon the town. They do. Okay, having a hospital in, in a community, I think, confers a benefit on that communi community. I don't know if I agree with that as zealously and as strongly as Milton Milton Hospital makes that point. But, sure. but, but it is a community benefit. So it's a jumping off point. How they arrived at that, I can't really say, but it's a jumping off point. <laughs> Um, Susanna, is sorry, that, that's okay. Okay, Susanna. <laughs> so it's a fair question, um, and it's just a, a jumping-off point. So, um, yeah, we um, there's still the the loan holdover. But how frequently do you meet with them, and how uh, cooperative do you find the conversations? Or, or product? I, I know how productive the conversations are because I'm looking at the numbers. But are they? open to discussion or are you bringing them in you know kicking and screaming no i i, <clears throat> I will say that each um of the three entities has been more than open and agreeable to having conversations and discussions mm -hmm. um Focus. having done this now for two years being a member of the pilot committee mm -hmm. uh we haven't really been able to make much progress okay um we really haven't i haven't it, it's frustrating it's Can frustrating who generally are you working with? So, um, President Ken Quigley at Curry. President, okay. Yeah, Rich Fernandez at Milton Hospital. Who's that? What's his role? He's the uh, the CEO. He's the CEO. Mm -hmm. okay. And the head of school, Todd Bland. 
at Milton Academy. Now, one of the strategies that we've been working on is to try to enter into a dialogue with um, the Board of Trustees. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in terms of individual entities, we're, we're we, we can't go any higher than we, you know, there's yeah. Ken, Ken Quigley reports to his board. Yeah. Todd Bland reports to his board. Rich reports to his board. So to the extent that we can drive, drive a dialogue with the board and perhaps have the board engage with their, you know, CEO, their head of school to make them sort of see the, the value and the wisdom in this, I think that, that that's worth trying. I'm also curious with the hospital. It's a Beth Israel Hospital. I mean, it's mm. part of a network. That's right. I, is there any value in leveraging Beth Israel and Plymouth pays X percentage? Yes. Do we even know those numbers? We've brought up those numbers. Uh, in fact, there's a BID Needham. Yep. Mm -hmm. Needham does make um, BID Needham does make pilot payments mm -hmm. to the town of Needham. Mm -hmm. And the CE. Uh, so. How much do they, they pay use them? the Boston model? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. That's a good question. I will get the answer to that. What if we were uh, that, to give that's you been brought up, Susanna, okay. to Rich Fernandez. Okay. Rich Fernandez knows that certainly as sure. an employee of BID, and he knows that we know that. What, would, what if we were to give you some more tools in your toolkit by saying there is a serious discussion at appropriate levels that the town of Milton is contemplating imposing fees for residents of any length. It's not dissimilar to Airbnb fees on dormitory residents or residence hall residents at Milton Academy in Curry that could be as much as 10% of the room and board that is being charged? Well, I don't think anyone's going to, I certainly am not going to object to having more sort of, you know, tools in my toolkit, if you will, Mr. But, Chair. you know, I think we've tried the carrot. Now it's time for the, cud for the, for the bludgeon. <laughs> I, I, I hate to say it. I, 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 you know, and Kenny Quigley's an old friend of mine. We went to Pierce Junior High School together. I have enormous respect for what he's done for Curry, but I also know that Curry College couldn't exist without the town of Milton, just like Milton Academy couldn't, and just like BID, just like BID Milton couldn't. When it was Milton Cottage Hospital and people went there from the town in large numbers as inpatients, that was a different story, mm -hmm. okay? Same was true with Milton Academy. Milton Academy <laughs> used to take a ton of Milton kids and give all kinds of financial aid, et cetera, et cetera. Now you have Milton Academy faculty members who do not send their kids there. They send them to the town. Mm. Their homes, which are owned by Milton Academy, are off the tax rolls, mm -hmm. and their students are going, 34 kids going at 14,000, 15,000 a head. We get Zippo for it. Mm -hmm. And that's an expensive proposition. And they Certainly. have the, pardon me, the effrontery to be late in a payment that is a fraction of what they would do as a tax-paying enterprise. And make no mistake, all of these institutions make money. I was a yeah. trustee at Curry College for years. Curry makes money, and if this is going to be something you can get, we can get as a town, as a pass-through, a fee on the residents uh -huh. uh, who pay nothing and frankly cost us money because they don't do anything for the town of Milton. Uh, they don't even give a free concert, for God's sake. Um, I think that there's a little bit of uh, an inequity that has to be redressed, and I would even talk about arrears from BID Milton and from Curry and from Milton Academy. And so the figure I threw out at $4 million, Based on the three, I'm sorry, uh, two million eighty-six thousand that I came up with that we were theoretically talking about. If we didn't, at the, if we were at the twenty-five percent of the assessed value, forget cutting it in half, and then some of the arrears, we come awfully close to that four million that I was talking about. So it didn't come about it capriciously, mm. um, and I'm I'm certainly nowhere near as nice as most of you people in this room when it comes to money. Um, and I have no problem asking for it, particularly for these institutions who have been doing fine for the last few years. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I have a question. Can you walk us through their um, reasoning? In other words, are they saying we can't afford it? <laughs> we don't think we owe it? <laughs> I'm trying to think of where to start. Uh, we have time. You're the major <laughs> item on the agenda. <laughs> So they're not duty bound to, to do this, as you all know. Or um, legally. Correct. I 
think their approach is they feel that they confer such a benefit on the town of Milton that they're <laughs> obviated and relieved of contributing anything in the way of All hard three. dollars. All three. I think Milton Academy feels that way more strongly than most. I think Curry <laughs> College. <laughs> well, well. Let's see. Let's see. Let me <laughs> think now. I have a few I adjectives asked. that come to mind. Arrogant being one. <laughs> I think well, certainly, I've, the way the numbers are reflected, you would have to say Milton Hospital probably feels that way more than most. I, it's just that Milton Academy is the entity that I've been uh, sort of yeah. most involved with in mm. terms of having a dialogue yeah, right. and a discussion. So that's freshest in my sort of memory, if you will. Um, I think in light of the fact that, you know, BID, some of their other campuses, Needham in particular, make contributions to their host towns uh, is... It hurts the credibility of, of their argument as to why they don't. Why do they do it to Needham? Did they have an agreement when they did an addition or something? I can't get an answer to that, John. I've tried. I've I, in my but experience with these hospitals. They are paying on that medical building. Yes. And that's yeah, over 100, fact, That's over 100000 right? This is an agreement that was entered into three days ago. The medical building has been taxed anyway, yeah, right? Yeah, that's for profit. Right. I understand that, uh, but they are paying a tax on some of that okay. property. I'm but that's appropriate. I'm not. I'm just saying, George. Yeah, no, I get it. Are they it's not the, the same corporate vote? entity. Yeah, they're paying the full tax on it. Yeah. I would think it's over a hundred thousand, right? I have a memo right here. This is from Brigham and Women's in this is Brookline, okay, where they just entered into a pilot agreement with the town of Brookline for a medical building um, for four hundred thousand dollars annually. Can I ask a question about this, about yes. specific about the hospital? Sure. Well, since we're following the Boston model, uh -huh. what do they pay in Boston? Do they actually pay the Boston model in Boston? Mm, good question. Boston University pays $32 million a year to the Probably city about the of Boston. Hospital. Oh, the hospital? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, in Boston. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Can you find that answer yeah, for us, please? Because yeah. I think that that would be the, the, the stick that you might need. <laughs> if we're going to follow a Boston model and they're paying for it in Boston, why wouldn't they pay for it in Milton? Right. Well, I well, think typically when you talk to these hospitals, the answer that you get is when it suits them, they're all one entity and they all do the same right. thing, right? Their HR right. practices are the same, et cetera. Yeah. Right. But when it doesn't suit them, mm -hmm. oh, no, I'm a standalone, I'm Milton, mm -hmm. I have my own Community. processes. and Exactly. Right. So you're going to get different answers, but I, I do think that's probably the way to go. I mean, it's yes. difficult to have a corporate policy that pays Needham and not Milton. I suspect they pay Plymouth pretty well from my experience. But yeah, Well, good. Susanna, you touched on some of the responses that I've gotten from Milton Hospital in that regard, which is uh, when it's convenient for their argument, they're one entity. When right. it's not convenient, then they become sort of standalone little yeah. fiefdoms, if you will. Right. And, and the other response that I get frequently is that the margins um, are so thin uh, on the services that they provide that they don't. But they, that's a that's a shopping answer. That's a Milton's margins yeah. may be thin, sure. but Beth Israel as an entity does not have thin margins. They can take money from Milton Hospital where it suits them, where there are money making enterprises within the hospital, but they they won't pony up and give. I mean, the money is there. Mm -hmm. Two hundred and forty five thousand dollars is nothing. I agree. Yeah. The, the reason that I asked about what their story is is I, to George's point. If you have, if, if if you need a stick, you need a tool. Mm -hmm. We should. Uh, could we vet that with town council before, so yes. that it's credible? And um, it, I don't think they're going to do it out of the goodness of their hearts. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, they need. No, if they were so inclined to, they would have already. Right. right. Yeah, no, they're when in doubt, mumble. And I think we're listening to that. Um, and I don't think there's any doubt. Frankly, I don't think there's any intention to increase or to pay what we're asking. And so I think at some point somebody has to be compelling them to see that there is a need, that there is a, um, a moral obligation, if nothing else. I agree, George, 100%. And, and I thought, frankly, I'll be honest with you, when I came across those other agreements that those other campuses entered into with their host towns, I, I thought I struck gold. I yeah. said, this is, the, this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know they know, but, but, but I thought, oh, maybe they probably thought we didn't know about this. And then I brought it to their attention. I said, this is it. Right. We, yeah. and, and it was not persuasive, unfortunately. So is it accurate to say that you feel, not to put words in your mouth, that you and the committee have sort of done your best work here, you've, I don't want to say exhausted the process, you've had multiple meetings, you've been as persuasive as you can be, and it would be helpful at this point to have additional pressure or some sort of tool in the toolkit? 
I'm always open to having more tools in the toolkit. Okay. I don't um, want to pin you down. No, I think incentives always You never even sent help. a letter to Milton Hospital from the Board of Selectmen yet, have you? We've, we send letters annually. I thought one year. wouldn't sign it. Oh, well, we sent it. There was a All member right. of the board that, that did not put her name to it. But, Why? Um, you'd have to ask her. I can't speak Can for Can you her. tell me who did sign the letter? Um, I signed it. Mike Zilla signed it. Um, Melinda Co uh, Collins signed it. And uh, Richard Wells. Thank you. Can I see that? I think that... I, th I think that if you did the math on a on a resident non-resident tax, and, and it had any sort of call legs, it a fee rather than a tax, I think would have less fee. issue. Fee, fee, fee. fee? Yeah. And it, and it had any possibility. I th I, if I were them, I'd write this they'd check be running, very quickly. They'd be they'd tripping over themselves to write the check. I'd mm -hmm. rather see you put the fee in. I'd want to, I want both. I'll be have very this honest. Conversation my over intent over is, if you don't. My obligation, our obligation, is to do the best for the town of Milton. Okay? These institutions aren't going to pick up and move. I, we know that. Okay? Um, and so it's in their interest to see that the town is well, uh, well taken care of. Uh, and it means they have to help too. And it doesn't mean opening up an ice skating rink, you know, every third Sunday at three in the morning for the residents to go in for an hour. Uh, that was actually a little bit of an exaggeration, but Milton Academy used to do that before they closed in the rink. They'd give an hour or two for they the residents. They yeah, still they do, do that? Yeah, yeah but bless it's them. crazy times. I, like I said, I, three, in the, really three, three and four in the morning on Sundays. Um, so, so, I mean, that's lovely, but it's not enough. Um, so I, I think that the issue is, 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 is really percolating because we find ourselves in a situation where we're looking at these numbers now for the second year, and I don't have to tell you, there isn't, <laughs> there isn't enough cash to do what we have to do. So I, I think, so you're 100% right, but, but I think that, that we sort of exist sort of in, in a, under a microscope, if you will. I mean, you're the warrant committee, for God's sakes. No one knows the finances of the town of Milton better than you, okay? I'm a member of the select board. But the perception is that Milton is a well-to-do affluent town, mm -hmm. and we're hitting them up, you know, pardon the colloquial expression, but we're hitting them up for money. And, and I think they get the sense, hey, listen, you're a well-to-do affluent town. Manage your finances better. We, <coughs> we know, hey, listen, trust me. I'm just, I think I'm just delivering that. the message. I'm playing devil's I get advocate. It. No, I get it. I, I know we're broke. It. I've heard you this from the school teachers as well. I've heard this from the school But the, from the perception school department as well. is this, when I yeah. deliver yeah. this message, yeah. listen, we could use some assistance, and you use the term, George, moral obligation, which I think I identify with completely. I think that they have a moral obligation to give something back to their host town. Mm. I believe that, okay? Um, all three even, of them. They're not even covering the kids going to school. Absolutely. That's John. Thank you. We didn't. I didn't want to make too obvious, but, but thank that, you for making the point. That, that's do you, a, do you feel like you're just wasting your time going to those things, John? No, I don't. I don't. They, I, I, I'm frustrated that yeah. I'm not making more progress more quickly. What can we do to help you with that? You can add some tools to my toolkit. You're, you're so eager to... <laughs> I know, but how legal will that be? How long well, it would it take to become legal? I think this is the question. They, they have a case. I think we have to make... I mean, your question is right, how long it's going to take. That's, I think, one of the issues that we have to face. I don't know. What? I what think if Christine you said, had a great it? point. Just, let's just turn it over to town council and yeah. find Tony. out what, the, what we can do. What well, about when the fire trucks and police, can you charge them like $1,000 to show up? No. We, 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 can't, we can't do that. Um, no, that, that's they do pay before. for false alarms, though, don't they? I know that, yeah. Everybody pays for false yeah. alarms, right? Issue. Oh, I, that's they can't pay for a false alarm? Well, well, they, no, they not about the false alarm. False alarm Everybody yeah. pays for those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even if you, they, they police show up at your own house and right. yes. there's nothing there that you get 25 bucks or whatever it is. But they don't have to pay any of this, which is the other part of that. I mean, they don't have to. They don't really have to pay even this the, by law. Understood. So, well, so I think that's part of the... the bigger problem and I my question would be what what discussions has the select board have with our legislative delegation regarding this as a bigger picture across the Commonwealth because we're not the only town sure that is right now <coughs> in, in, in the situation sure there are towns all across the, the state that are like this and that have huge major entities that are not paying anything in taxes right so I'm right. curious to know if there's any um, movement on the state side sure. about trying to redo right right well that's this. a bigger a bigger much broader issue and I think that it's percolating under the surface it is. which okay, is good. that these these you know 
entities that have been given this um, this pass, if you will, for so long, is it time for them to start to, to pony up a little bit? So right. I think that that's a discussion that will become more and more common and more and more prevalent in the next few years, you know, at the state government level. Well, there is um, precedent for the, I mean, the for, a former town manager in Milton many years ago uh, went from being town manager of Milton to being town manager at Cambridge, city manager of Cambridge, and commented to me many years later, after he had retired, he said Cambridge could not exist without Harvard University any more than Harvard could exist without Cambridge. Right. right. And right. therein lies the wisdom of having a close working relationship, which isn't just, you know, hi, please come in and take a walk through Harvard Yard. Harvard gives, mm -hmm. they, they pay to the city of Cambridge for various services, and Cambridge comes and does all kinds of things for Harvard as well, not just police uh, surveillance, but other things as well uh, as, a, as a favored institution. And look at how huge it is. And I don't even want to think about what the assessed value of that real estate would be uh, in real but Cambridge terms. is very similar to Milton in the fact that they have a very diverse actual population Quite. that lives within that town or city. Right. And it has so economically. Absolutely. And, so, and, it has, right, and, and economically, yeah. very different. They have massive homeless population right. in Cambridge. But they also not. have, you know, $10 million homes absolutely. over by so Kirkland that's, Street. So it's the so. same. So yeah, I'm happy exactly you brought right. that up. Yeah. So, so, I, I think that going after the trustees or at least getting in front of them and, and making an, uh, an issue for them is a good strategy. Mm -hmm. But I also think that um, the people in the town of Milton probably need to understand this issue better. Mm -hmm. I would agree and, with that. Yeah. And if we Definitely. could garner the people mm -hmm. to realize what's happening and what's not happening here, because they're the ones that are making the sacrifices right now and, and paying all these extra fees, whether it's water and sewer, garbage, sewer, um, you know, cutbacks in, to, uh, yeah. in schools and teachers and things like that. They 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 feel it in their pocketbook, sure. and they can hardly afford to pay mm, for sure, that. Sure. So then you see these entities that are making money hand over fist. So why not have some kind of grassroots effort? I mean, if if talking to them gentleman to gentleman and, and that's not working, and going to the trustees isn't working, then maybe just get the rest of us all involved. Maybe a picket is good. <laughs> get on the news. I'm, you know, I mean. It, I see stuff like that on the news, and that's what gets people involved, and that's what, sh if we have to, shame them into it. Sure, sure. I think he's right that you don't want to make an enemy, necessarily. No. So, so, so it's a very <laughs> delicate balance. And Kathy, I see yep. the approach that you're advocating, yep. and, and, and so there's, there's a lot of, uh, how do I put this? There's a lot of value in what you're proposing, mm -hmm. but it's a very fine line because if you go too far in that direction, you risk antagonizing one of these entities to the point that they say, ah, oh, the hell with it all together. So it's incumbent upon me and but people like me to, to find what that fine line is. what then? Right. Are they going to leave? So we're, 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 we're back. Right, and then we, we're right back where we started. We have to be, in this, in this body, we have to be a little judicious about right. proposing things because whatever is proposed comes back to us to val validate, to vet, and I'll sure. to recommend to town meetings, so it would be extremely difficult for us to propose this I, and then to opine on it and make the recommendation because yeah. it would look at the conflict of interest is just so huge, it's, it's staring you in the face. I get the sense that, that part of the reluctance on the part of these three institutions is to, to formally enter into an actual agreement where some sort of um, agreement is, Obligation is, is signed. Makes. Okay. Yeah, and then they have a so, so to the extent that we're able right. to frame it, in terms of a contribution to a capital project, and then we readdress it every single year, I think, I would hope, maybe would have, you know, better results. It hasn't yet, but, but, but the, the, the answer that I've gotten from one of these entity, entities as to why they don't want to do this is because they don't want to set a precedent whereby yeah. they've now entered into this agreement, and with each successive year, they're obligated to make a contribution times two and a half percent, you know, three percent, whatever the case may be. They don't want to do that. And frankly, playing devil's advocate, I, I can understand that, okay? If I head up one of these entities and we've never done this and all of a sudden I enter into this uh, uh, sort of agreement. It opens the door. It's, it's, it sets a precedent mm -hmm. and perhaps that individual doesn't want to be the one associated with that. So, so I get that. Yeah. So the question then becomes, how do you reach the end goal, which is, you know, getting a payment? Right. The bottom line is we're looking for some money, correct? Because times are tough. We all got to pull together. We need a contribution. Whatever you want to call it, frankly, to me, isn't that important. Whether it's a pilot payment or a contribution or what, what have you, that to me is a detail that's far less important. What's most important is getting the funds. Right. 
But it's the funds and it's the partnership. I the partnership, they certainly. Have to, they have to know that they're in it with us. But I'm going to push back on, like, they, short term, mm -hmm. sure, <clears throat> right? But long term, if we had this additional 1.5 million, it's just mind blowing to me. This, the, these are not big figures. Then we're counting on it, mm. but we're not in an agreement. Mm. That's a problem. Sure. And we have to go through this dance. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. I feel like there's no uh, value in it for them right now. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it, we. Ha I don't know what would happen to the town if we didn't get this money. Is it a big hotel across the street from you? Is <laughs> it, you know, that we, you know, people start moving out of town? I, That's happen. happening. Right. I mean, like that. They have to have some investment in the fabric of the town mm -hmm. for their own benefit. That's mm -hmm. the only way they're yeah. going to pay. Either we're going to get, we're going to get smacked with some big fee, or we're going to, you know, mil I, I grew up in a town um, in the middle of Maine with a very, with Colby College. It was a super quaint town. It went down the crapper, and yeah. Colby is dumping millions into the downtown mm -hmm. uh -huh. because it looks like it's they're, horrible it's, yeah, and they need to attract students it's, it's, right it's rough. and they're asking right. parents to pay seventy thousand dollars a year <laughs> that's not going to happen in milton we're too close to boston and blah 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 but but what you know what will is are, is our property rate going to go up and then well they the have people that i don't know you know there's going to be some we have 16 overrides in the past right. 30 some odd years well i think milton academy takes the position that the fact that they are located within the town of Milton that that therefore increases the property values in no. and of itself. Oh, that's a nice try. No, no. John, did you have a question? Oh. Yes, sir. How come you dealing with Milton Academy? Why can't you just ask them, why don't you take over the maintenance of Churchill's Lane's playground? They're right there. Mm -hmm. Ooh. All right. Start something like that, something simple. Sure. Because you go by their property yeah. and their fields are pristine. Mm -hmm. Send it to the send the grounds. Ask them if they could go over to Churchill's Lane, and take care of that for the town. Start something simple like that. That's okay, a great that, idea. that's a good suggestion. All right, because I do like the library that. in the town hall and I really enjoy doing it. I know you do. And for a little company like me to do it, yeah, they should cool. step up to the plate and go to kind of Churchill's Lane. It's a good and build idea. A school. It's not a big deal. It. I'll just say, why don't we try in good faith? Start there. It is a good suggestion. You know, services rendered. You know, oh, I'm sorry, Scott. You were. I got. A, I got a question. There's 37 kids going in the school system. 34. 34, and it's 15,000 a take, yeah. for, yeah. for a child. Yeah. So that's over half a million yeah. dollars yeah. a year, yeah. and we're asking you for how much? Yeah. They're giving 104. Half of that. Two, they, they're they're losing money. No, we've been beating the drum on this one for a long time, and yeah. we are losing money. We're asking for too little. I, I I'm with you on that one. This is a school though. But I actually think well, the last few years, yeah. 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 they started charging tuition for the for the lower school, whereas before they didn't. But well. you're right, you're right, Scott. Aaron. So I actually think that I, I was about to hit on something around that, which is I believe that in the Chapter 70 funding, which is the formula for public education, I believe that there's something in there about how it has to be free if you're to residents of the town as long as you are paying taxes within that town uh, or you are bingo or you are like, it, like if you're in a dcf foster care situation right, that's right, right. There, there's right. provisions sure. in there Absolutely. for that yeah. so my question then is 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 there a legal route that we could take where the employees of milton academy are living within the town boundaries mm -hmm. but we are not getting any taxes for their property, if right. there's a way for us to just, just for the kids that are currently attending our school system, if there's a way for us to go after the funding for that. And that would be a question be for start. town council. That would be town council. Um, but I Kevin. believe that there's a provision in that funding that talks about why it's free for students. And that goes all the way back to I think the that would start the discussion. I think it would start, I mean, it's a very good start to the discussion. So uh, if, because that's the one that really burns me up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I live in this town. I have children that go to school in this town and I actually pay double taxes for those children to go into town because I'm from a divorced family and we both reside in the town of Milton. <laughs> so I'm picking up some extra tabs. So it kind of burns me that these kids and at no fault of their own, obviously. Sure. Obviously. Sure. These sure, are children we're talking about. <laughs> um, but that they're not contributing, at least to the school system. Mm -hmm. um, it, 
I don't know how Milton Academy can even look somebody in, in the eye and say that that's okay. Oh, because because they're bracing us and, and enhancing but the pride of Milton by being we're here. We're educating their their employees' children. Well, which and they don't do. No, ironically. they don't do that. Right. And if they wanted to do right. that, they should. Well, they should do it. They if, should if do it. If it's a benefit, right. then they should. If it's should a pay benefit, for it. right? Yeah, right. So I'm wondering if that's something for town council that maybe we can go at it that way and at least sure. get the funding for that because I think there is something in Chapter 70 that says yeah, that. At the very least, that has to be. We can explore that. But I think, and that money would go a long way to the school budget, the school which we budget. saw in December. It would help quite a bit, Christine. Are you saying? But if I understood you correctly, you're saying that we, as the Warrant Committee, shouldn't be asking Town Council these questions. We can ask. Come back. We cannot originate the proposal, however. Right. We can't. We can. Just throw ideas. We out. can give the idea exactly. That's town, what the town, the, the, the select board. We used to call Original. it the Town Council. The select board can do this. We cannot. Right. We have to. We have to approve it, vet it, and recommend it to approve. We have to recommend it to town meeting, which approves. Uh, our job is not necessarily to originate. We can talk about ideas. We can feed the various uh, empowered groups in the town, whether it's the <coughs> town administrator or the select board, uh, some ideas and some perspective based on what we have generated internally and what we hear from the constituents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but as, as far as coming up with the idea and the proposal, that's for, properly speaking something that should happen elsewhere. So no. let me ask it oh, more directly. Yes. For these two items, are we going to do we want? Are we asking town council? Or are we asking um, select board member Ferry? I just do something. Town else. Town we can we can ask town council for about the revenue generating potential here. That's that's okay. We're asking the question, and we can ask whatever we want to whomever we want. And so asking that question is something that can happen. I think coming from the town from the select board of the town count, the town administrator has a little more teeth. Um, you can't make a proposal. To do this, I do not believe we can. I can validate that, but I'm, I verify that. But I'm I'm very certain that we would we would be in difficulty because then we have to approve something. <laughs> we have to recommend something that we correct we put together ourselves. Right. And again, the conflict of interest is, uh, if not illegal, it's certainly questionable. But Just, okay. And the people that move to this town. Going to Milton Academy, the kids. The traffic got so bad for them to commute. They're all buying million-dollar homes. They're fixing them up. They're buying. They're, they're going with the building permits and everything. Right. So there is a lot of revenue being generated yeah. off of that. I'm just. I'm not sticking up for them. No, I don't disagree. There There's is a, a lot of houses that are being done over real nice. Oh yeah. From people that have moved here from Milton Academy. I have a college classmate that did exactly that thing, but their kid lived with them. And no, I know. I'm just over, saying so. it does attract it some high end people yeah. that I'm are fixing disagree. up a lot of these big houses. Which are expensive to maintain. <laughs> right. And they are getting building permits yeah, and everything yeah, else. Yeah. So. John, as an argument, though, and, and that's been brought up in these discussions and um, on the surface, it kind of. I'm, I'm not sticking up for them. I understand that, but you're, you're, you're sort of. The premise is that if the people that are associated with Milton Academy didn't purchase and or renovate or fix up that house and no one would. I mean, it, it, right. it, 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 that as an argument, I just throw that right out the window it, because right. Right. it's too speculative. Right. You know, it's wonderful that someone associated with, did in fact buy that house, but if, if they didn't, somebody else would have. And so, so that is an argument and that's been raised and it's just, it's, it's, it's not a very good argument. Well, I think um, this is a discussion point isn't. because again, one of the first things that we talked about was the town does not have an expense problem, it has a revenue problem. This is a source of revenue that is overlooked, underutilized, particularly given what we see in the city of Boston next door and other towns which have similar institutions, have similar, uh, I don't want to say dependencies on property tax, et cetera, <coughs> but have uh, large institutions which uh, make those towns better places to live too. Um, but I also think that it's time for the discussion to, to, to take a more aggressive uh, 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 point of view. Uh, I'm not saying what has happened in the past has not been effective. I think you've gone about as far as you can go, uh, but this is in Kansas City and it's not up to date and we really have to get this moving mm -hmm. uh, and relatively quickly. And I think that if there is an incentive that we can suggest to the town council, uh, to the select board and to uh, the uh, town administrator is to uh, first look at the discussion point about um, uh, students attending the town of Milton who are not in tax paying households and secondly um, 
and what redress there might be to that. And secondly, discussing a fee for non-residents in the town as a percentage of what they pay for room and board. Has, has the Milton Times, to, to the best of my recollection, they really haven't done a story on this. It seems newsworthy oh, no, to me. The, 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 a, I don't think it's popular to talk about no. this. And secondly, I don't think people really think about it. They do, well, that's my point. I don't they think don't. Kathy's raising a good yeah, point. Like, I don't think I, people think about this. I don't it's know not, that. Yeah, and they if they start to realize that and they realize what they're sacrificing to live in the town of Milton, I think they're gonna, you're going to garner a lot of interest. And you do it. You can do it respectfully. Absolutely. You just, you just, it's an we're not talking process. about. You know, again, we're not talking about denigrating anybody. We're just no. saying, okay, again, uh, no. we, we hear what you're saying, but it's, <laughs> try again. Let's let's have something that's really compelling. To me, it, from if I'm Milton Academy or I'm Milton Hospital, to me, this seems like a win-win. You're yeah. doing the right thing. Yeah. You're being socially conscious. You're, you're, you, you, you know, George, as you touched upon that term, uh, moral responsibility, which I strongly believe that they have. You're doing the right thing. And it's a huge public relations win Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. That's why I'm, be, I'm, I'm so frustrated by this. And I, and I but, think- But the evidence bears out that what you're saying is totally inaccurate because rationally speaking, you've tried it and they don't have a public But conscience. what you're missing is what you said is the awareness. The awareness it would be a public relations win if everyone was talking about was Milton aware. Academy, the hospital, yeah. and Curry College. They, right. If they had a, a conscience, they would... And he's they don't been, have a conscience. They don't yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. He's saying well, they should. it's a win-win for them that they should just come to the table and say this. But it's obvious the evidence bears out that that's not true. I but like if it was a public relations win and people were aware of the issue... Are you talking about be, the citizens or the... Yeah, I'm talking about the citizens. Yeah. Yeah, but the college doesn't care. No, they don't. They don't care. Those guys. Well, oh, I think I, if there I, were I, more I, awareness, I, then they would. Yeah. I think we should be a little them. bit I circumspect they, when we say they don't care or they're not aware. I think that they, there are elements in these institutions which do care, which are aware, but where it's, um, let's say, probably convenient or certainly efficacious for them to, to not admit it because it would just cost money, which would have to be paid by someone and ostensibly by students or their parents and uh, having raised four kids and sent them to private schools I'm very sympathetic to what it costs but I also pay ridiculous taxes here in town and I'm sympathetic to what that means particularly as I don't have kids in the school anymore um, so the the reality is that uh, you find uh, you find a double-edged sword here well, certainly. I mean, we all have agendas, and we all have restrictions uh, on our agendas and trying to accomplish our agendas. And, and each of these individuals, Ken Quigley, Rich Fernandez, and Todd Bland, to, to a man, are, are gentlemen. Absolutely. And I believe in their heart of hearts, they want to do the right thing. I do believe that, so but they're is. working within the confines of, 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 of their boards. And they have and, their and, institutions and, that so they, that it, the, make prosper. People's That's what makes it so frustrating. I, and their willingness to pay. So they had, uh, people's commitment shows up in their willingness to pay. They're not committed to this. No, they're not. They're if committed, they were, we'd see, they're committed we'd see. to holding on to their money. Correct. Right. That's which right. they, use, which they that, use for their own institutions. Right. Correct. And their priorities that they set. And I understand that. So which is what how do we how do we move to get the committees that are authorized to do so to have the town council investigate these alternatives and move through this thing as quickly as possible? We have the I'll chair. do it first thing tomorrow. We I'll have reach the out chair to the payment to tax committee here. You've, you've, you've got a lot of information and a lot of perspective from us tonight. We're very grateful that you came because a lot of us have been looking at this project for quite a while. Uh, I know we all have ideas about it. Uh, some of us are a little more aggressive than others. Uh, I think that exists on the, on the select board as well. Uh, going, we're, we're not looking to bankrupt these venerable institutions which have been around for, you know, in the case of Milton Academy since 1792 and Curry College since 1879 and Milton Hospital since the turn of the 20th century. Um, but I think that there is uh, a corporate citizenship yes. isn't limited to for-profit enterprises. Right, right. I think two things. I think that they know what the right thing to do is. Scott and I might disagree on what you're right. If they really wanted to do the right thing, it's very simple. They would. I, I think that the decision is a little bit more nuanced. Yes. Mm -hmm. Than I would like to think. Which le which is but my guys, frustration they have in these discussions. All these budgets <laughs> to balance and all of these asks and all of these these bosses and totally. It's so like, so it's nuanced kind of, is a good word, George. You've been, you've been doing this for two or three years since you've been on the board. Yes. Have you made 
Any progress? Five, ten steps forward. <laughs> no, seriously. Well, it's, it's a well, legitimate question. Well, two of them question. increased this year. I think that's... Yeah. Well, that. yes, sure. it's an incremental increase. There is a caveat to the number that I shared with you on Milton Academy. They did have some property on the tax rolls and they applied for an abatement and that abatement was granted. So that was $110,000 they were getting in taxes, See? which oh. were... N oh. Now they replaced that and they said, well, we'll make you whole. Oh. Yeah, how very it's nice. Kind of exactly. Next huh? They come these guys are dumb like foxes. Oh, no, this is a very, these are sophisticated so organizations. I have enormous regard for them. So we, no, 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 no. They will see. That 140, 110 of that is from. Correct. Correct. They're going to pay right. that. So that's, so really, so, <laughs> no, no, no. Move Hold shells. on a second. Hold on a second. You're telling me that of the 140 that they paid, the 110 was the agreement. The 110 was, was the, an the offset for the yeah, abatement. Offset, yeah. So basically, we're looking at 30,000. That's right. <laughs> I mean, let's break this down, guys. We're half a million dollars. We got 30,000 extra. We got 30,000. So next year, we shouldn't even be expecting the 140. We should be looking more at the 30,000 range. No, no, no. They're going to continue to, to pay the 110. Correct. For, for when, how long? when we're asking for, for yes, an ever? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> a second but it's very important. But, it, but it's very important that that is classified as a as a, as a pilot paper. Okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. So, but, so yeah. that was, but um, I like John's idea. I mean, I'll be honest with you. The gears of government grind very very slowly. Mm. This nobody's more frustrated in this process than me. I, I can imagine. Okay. Yeah. But, 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 but the frustration I, and. and Good can come of these sorts of discussions. When you get 10 or 12 people around a table, John, you brought up a great point. And I, I can't, it's a great suggestion. And I think it's like right in Milton Academy's wheelhouse. You start small and you build from it. You get a small win and you build. What would, what would anyone think now. about asking the CEOs of these venerable institutions to come and talk to us? Ah! I'm serious. Yeah, I'd love to talk. Great. I mean, we can make that invitation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm more than happy to, to we can we can make the invitation. Yeah, make, make the invitation. And if they if they want to come, they can see the face of the town of Milton as that we represent and tell us why it's hard for them to come up with what we've asked them to for the good of the order. Water act, the water runoff act was basically so we could get money out of the institutions. Right. That's what I've right. heard. But the average citizens paying and it went up on them too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, so I think that would be something that I think we can talk about. I, I will I will explore that as well, because uh, I think we might have a little time as we look at the town budgets going through. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Well, Go ahead, question. Do we have a similar situation at Curry like we do at Milton Academy with students coming to Milton? In terms of you know the teachers, children of faculty, children? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think the faculty gets housing. Not, Once upon yeah. a time, the president. The president still has a house that I believe is off the tax rolls, and the dean did, the dean of the college. I think that is now a residence hall, and, so it's and, and, ten, and ten kids are, are, I mean, they have kids of their own at this point, so they're not in the school. So it's not, that's not an issue, I believe. No. Uh, I've not heard the school I don't think, department bring that up in yeah, any of the years. I don't think Curry has that. At Milton Academy, definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay. But Curry has taken taken a lot of property that's contiguous with the college off of the off of the real estate rolls. I mean, yeah. Brush Hill Road, when I grew up there, there were, you know, half a dozen, no more than that, probably a dozen houses that used to have families in their large families um, that are now residence halls or offices or, mm -hmm. or centers for one, you know, interesting, you know, Methodist. social action through poetry <coughs> department or something like that. Um, so I think that that sort of thing does exist, but they're off the tax rolls okay. as well. Just a, one comment. I think that you've done a tremendous amount, and we thank you for oh, of everything yeah. um, that you guys have, have tried to do. It sounds like an exercise in frustration. Well, <laughs> that's town government. It can be <laughs> <laughs> Do they feed you when you go there? <laughs> <laughs> they make you lunch. It's taken off of the pie. It's got a dorm room. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I get a free skate at the rink. Oh, oh, Sunday oh, morning. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, nice. Yeah. Time to get yeah, up in the Five thirty. Oh, yeah. That was no. Joe. I was kidding, by the um, way. No. So my takeaways from this are are, are twofold. John, honestly, your suggestion is a great one, and I'm going to reach out to the head of school, Todd Bland. That's that's small. It's a good start. And I'll call Kevin Freitag tomorrow, and we'll get an answer on that chapter, chapter seven funding and, and that. Right. See if and if you there. if you want to bring to to the town council some of the sense that you have from us about 
uh, an idea for right. fee generation. Of course, okay. Uh, then we can talk about that. We can talk about it. We can okay. certainly talk about it. Um, and to raise awareness of this issue, I think, yeah. is something that's important now because we're we're limited. We're right. very limited, and, and the, there's no question. I mean, <laughs> the bills aren't going to take three years to come in. The bills are coming in now. I mean, <laughs> even if we even if we didn't think about these three places, it, we could make money off of Airbnb. To the extent that there are, I know that there are yeah. several Airbnb uh, operations in town, and I think that's something that has to be. I know the city of Boston is doing that now. I don't. Yeah. Think, I, I think it's a great idea for us to, to ramp that up, ramp that discussion up, and to have that agenda item. Yeah, and, and the other thing too, more broadly, anything that any of us can do, Kathy, your suggestion too was a great one to, to shine a light on this and raise awareness around this. Again, we're we're directly involved in town government. We eat, sleep, and breathe it. But but not everyone else in the town is, and and so we think because we live this and we they attend these it. meetings. Sometimes you gotta yeah. get outside that bubble and people, what? I didn't know that. Well, I will say this. I will say this. There are, are people that watch these meetings. And uh, I, I'm All four of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's more no, than that. I'm, I'm kind of shocked because I get stopped in the Fruit Center and other places. Oh, it was interesting meeting, the session that you had of the Warren Fair. Like, okay, fine. I'm glad you're watching. I'm thinking, my God. Um, good for you. Um, one of the things that, that folks can do is write a letter to the editor in the Milton Times. Can we this. write a letter yes. to the editor absolutely. as the Warrant Committee collectively? We could, we absolutely. Could. Yeah. We absolutely I would could. be happy to take a first pass. We will, I will say that's great, and if you want to send it around or bring it to the next meeting, yep. uh, we'll, we'll opine and we'll do what we can to edit it and to give you ideas. Terrific. Done. Tony, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Very grateful you. for right. coming. Feel free to, look forward to uh, call on me anytime. I'm happy we'll, to come. We'll, I'm sure we'll have conversations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good work. Thank you. Uh, our next agenda item is talking about, uh, we talked about this a little bit before, the schedule for the subcommittee's meeting with the uh, departments of the town. Um, to the extent that you need to have contacts made, um, I can ask Mike uh, Dennehy to, we're going to have, <coughs> I think at the next meeting or next two meetings, we'll have the uh, committees, uh, the chairs of the different departments come and do their presentation to us. And after that, we should look to tying up any questions that the subcommittee has, has for them specifically over the, maybe the course of the next week so that by, I would think by the end of January, all of that work should be done. And then we can start in February talking about um, uh, any questions that we might have for them to come in to answer. And then to look at our timeline that we have, we want the warrant has to go to the printer on uh, Friday the 13th of March. Um, so we will have effectively the articles coming to us that we have to vote on by the 23rd of January. So my suggestion is that we have one meeting uh, uh, either next, next week to whether it's Monday or Wednesday, um, uh, I'll leave to, to, to your sense, maybe uh, Wednesday, or, uh, Wednesday, which would be the 15th, 22nd? Oh, you're gone, aren't you? No, or you're here? No, no. Oh, you're two weeks. Yeah, two the weeks. 15th. Uh, the 15th. 15th. Um, is, is everybody Wednesday. around on the 15th? That's next Monday, right? No. No, it's next Wednesday. It's Wednesday, Sorry. Wednesday, next Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the 15th? To have the budget, to have the, the uh, department chairs come. Okay. Is everybody okay with that? Wednesday the 15th? Wednesday the 15th. Yeah. January the 15th, right? January 15th. Yeah, January 15th. We'll ask DPW and, ah, and Chief King and Chief Grant <laughs> to come in <laughs> and hope that there isn't a snowstorm. <laughs> no snow. Yeah, there's nothing in the next week. It's kind of remarkable. But again, we remember what 20, was it 2016 or 2015? Didn't snow until February. Oh, and then, then we like got the, destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. We got absolutely, we got destroyed. Mr. Chair, you said January 23rd we have to vote? January 23rd is when the articles come to us. Oh, oh, The actual oh. articles come, so we theoretically can't vote on anything until we see the article. I, thank you. I right. was confused with okay. the timing. So, so effectively, we will have, from the 23rd of January, when we see the articles, to uh, the middle of March to draft and to send them in. But That's we'll have a deadline, I think, well before that. We actually have some time. This is to make up for the for the incredible, you know, Keystone Cops routine we did for the uh, special meeting uh, in uh, the fall, in December, I should say. 
So I think we have a little more time to do this, but that also means that as we go through, there's the, the, we, we have no limit on surprises that can come to us as we had last year. So we've got to be a little bit aware as we go through these that there may be sensitivities that have to be made and scenarios that we might have to look at based upon some of the requests that we see. So um, if that's the case, we can have our next meeting on the 15th of January. And at that point, um, uh, I, I will uh, communicate with um, the town administrator to see if we can get uh, Chief King and Chief Grant and um, Chase Berkeley from the DPW here to do their presentations, which I think uh, uh, is always, it's always helpful because they are, answer a lot of the questions in advance. And any of the subcommittees can, at that point, if they want to schedule, that's perfectly fine. But we'll have a couple weeks after that to do the business that we need to. So, uh, John. So is the override off the table? Not I, I can't say that. I haven't seen the articles yet. I hope the override is, but if it, we'll see. Short answer is we'll see. Um, I think the town wants to avoid another override. I mean, it's so unsafe. But then again, 16 over 30, 38, 39 years, that's the average is one every, every other year almost. But of those 16, nine... Uh, Seven, seven of them were not voted through, so almost half, very interestingly. When It'd I be went interesting back to see if those were the ones that were right after the successful. Mm -hmm. It would be. Uh, actually, we can find that out. I, can, I, I have that data. Interesting. I have that data. But history prevails after the vote, yeah. whatever people vote on, most of that gets eaten up by raises. Absolutely. Raises and new equipment and other things that are on the wish list. Um, and... I mean, that, that is what it, it is unfortunate, but it's true. Um, and this is this is why we have to talk about revenue as as something uh, that needs to be enhanced. Um, and yeah, sure, Milton has a great reputation of being a lovely place to live, and you know that you know we're all we're all descended from aristocrats living here in town. Uh, if you talk to people who don't live here, uh, and some of us know that that's that's absolutely not true. Um, I think in, you know in another age, my family wouldn't have been let through the front door of some of the houses in town. Um, but the reality is that you have uh, uh, a very diverse town. We have a wonderful legacy. It is a beautiful place to live. The services are fine. The schools are terrific. Um, and our objective is to keep it that way. And that takes investment and it takes energy and it takes uh, a rational approach to keeping what is good, good, and trying to improve what isn't. And I think that's, that's partly why I'm here and I'm, I'm sure that's a lot of the reason why the rest of you are here as well. So anyway, um, is that if there is no new business, uh, we have our next meeting on the 15th of January. Um, uh, so if there's no business, the new business, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Thank you all very much. Thank you. Stay warm.